What's up guys, we're going to be doing Bayesian Networks today, and I've got done way too many Bayesian Networks because I've recorded this video a million times, but hopefully this time it works. Um, okay, so we're looking at what you would be given on an exam or an assignment or something. Uh, essentially, this is your Bayesian Network. Um, you have your arrows here. These indicate dependencies. So, Martin can only be late if he oversleeps or if there's a train strike. That's what the green hours mean. Norman can only be late if there's a train strike, and that's it. Then we have these little probability graphs beside. Uh, we're using these letters here that we've already assigned. Um, if they don't assign you these already on an exam or an assignment, you can just kind of give them whatever you want. Uh, so the probability that Martin will oversleep, so that's what the little T means here. That means true. So the probability that Martin oversleeps is true, 0.4. The probability that there is a train strike, so the probability that T is true, is 0 0.1. And then we have a trickier one down here, uh, where we have dependencies. So the probability that Martin is late, depending on if he oversleeps or if there's a train strike, is denoted by this notation. So the probability that M is true, based on O and based on T, with a little bar in the, m in the middle there, that one there. Okay, so if O is true and T is true, then the probability of Martin being late is 0 0.8, and then it just goes down the list like that. So, a question that you could be asked on your exam is how many numbers are we using? So you could just count the numbers. You could just go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we have 8 numbers. But I'm going to show you how to do it a different way. I'm going to show you how to do it a stupid way. So a prob the probability of O, T, M, N. So the probability of all these events happening all at once. We're going to decompose this probability. Well, we have to start from the bottom up. So I'm going to start from Norman just because that's what I have in my notebook. And I don't want to give you guys some wrong information in the video. So I'm going to start with Norman, which is N. So the probability of N happening. We're just kind of separating it out. We're just kind of pulling Norman out of this big probability we're decomposing. I'm going to shove a bar here. So the probability of n happening depending on O, T, and M. So O, T, and M are just the remainder of our random variables. And then multiplied by the probability of O, T, and M. So we're just pulling n out. We're saying the probability of n depending on the rest of our random variables multiply by the probability of the rest of our var random variables. So if you recall from stats, just a bit of a crash course here, if you have and, so event 1 is happening and event 2 is happening, then it's multiplication. If you have or, so it's event 1 is happening or event 2 is happening, then you have addition. So here, because we're working with the probability of all these events happening all at the same time, it's and, so it's multiplication, which is why we're multiplying here. Okay, so we can further decompose this. Probability of n depends only on t. So then we have the probability of our next bottommost bubble. So we haven't done m yet. So we're going to do the probability of m depending on t. Oops, depending on depending on o and t. So again, we're just kind of pulling stuff apart, right? So here, Martin is late. That's M. It depends on O and T. So then we just kind of shove the remainder of our random variables into its own probability. And then finally, we can't decompose this one any further. We can't decompose this one any further. But we can decompose this one. They don't have any dependencies, so they're just going to be on their own. Just like that. So now the way that we count our numbers is we just look. So we have probability of n happening um, depending on t. So that's this right here. How many numbers in this graph? Two. All right, p, o, t, same thing. How many numbers? We use four there. How many numbers in o? Just one. How many numbers in t? Just one. So depending on the notation that you get, um, you might have like false 1 minus 0 
you don't include that number when you're counting. You only want to count the numbers that you're given, like the direct numbers. You don't want an equation, you don't want anything fancy or special, you just want a straight up number. So we're counting a straight up number here, we're counting a straight up number here, we have four straight up numbers here, etc. You know. So then at the end, we're going to wind up with eight, just like we did here. Okay, so another type of question that you could get on an exam is something like this. It's like, what is the probability that t is true depending on m being true and n being true? So we didn't include O. We we're going to have things called, like, uh, I call them floaters, floating random variables. It's like where the random variable can be anything. So you'll notice that here O is not included, which means that O could be anything. We don't know what it is. So we have to calculate O being true and O being false. I'm going to cut out for a second. I'm going to write out the summation. All right, so this part might not make a whole lot of sense to you guys. I want to explain it as best as I can. Uh, uh, it just kind of, it's a little tricky. So we have the summation. We have, at the bottom, we have the grand scheme of things, I want to say. It's like the total order of events. So in this question, we're given that t is true depending on some other things. But we have to look at what happens if t is either true or false. So we get kind of a huge set of events. And then we're pulling out what we want from that huge set of events. So we don't really care about M and N being false, just because we're looking at T depending on M and N being true. So we're assuming that these two things are already true. Though T could go either way in the grand scheme of things. So this top summation is looking at all of the different probabilities. Um, actually, there's only really two. It's O being either true or false, so it's our flow to random variable as seen here and here, it's not given a value. So we're looking at all those different sets of probabilities um, where O is true or O is false. Now at the bottom we're looking at if O is true or O is false and if T is true or false, just because again we're trying to pick out, we're trying to pull out the probability that we want from the grand scheme. So let's calculate this. I'm going to cut out for another second. Alright, so we have our summation here. We're going to calculate this first. So we have the probability that O is true, that T is true, that M is true, and N is true. Now we're doing addition. So recall from our little crash course from earlier. We're doing OR. O can't be true and false at the same time. That wouldn't make any sense. So, here O will be false, T will be true, M will be true, and N will be true. Okay, I'm not going to write out that second summation yet, just because we can use the value that we calculate here in that second summation. Um, so, we're looking at where O is true. T is true. I'm going to use a different color. So, O is true, T is true, M is true, and T is true. Alright, so in our little graph back up here, we see that O is true, O being true, there's a 0 0.4 probability. And we're multiplying because this is all within the same event. All these things are happening at once. So T being true, that's 0 0.1. Again, from our table up there. Now M being true, we already know that O is true and T is true. So M being true, that would be this first number here. So that's 0 0.8. And N being true... Uh, and being true if t is true, so that's 0 0.8 as well. OK, 
okay and then I'm going to add we have O being false so that's 0 0.6 because we have 0 0.4 for truth which means that false is just 1 minus 0 0.4 uh, 0 0.6 multiplied by t being true, 0 0.1 multiplied by m being true. So here we have o is false and t is true. So that's 0 0.6 and n is true. Our t is also true. So that's 0 0.8. That will give us a lovely grand total of uh, 0 0.0544. Alright, so we're not done yet, but we can use that 0 0.0544 in our second summation here. So, this probability that we just calculated is actually also a part of this next one because that event is contained within the other event just because O can be either true or false and T can be either true or false but we have some more stuff to calculate so we have O is true, O is false so here we're going to have O is true again but this time T will be false, m is still true, n is still true, plus p, o is false here, t, t is false here, m is true, n is true. Okay, so essentially, what this is is 0 0.0544 plus ooh this is going to get tight I'm going to rearrange some things a little bit I'll cut out for a sec okay sorry about that I just needed some space okay so we're only going to be looking at the numbers for this one so we're going to be looking at O is true so that's 0 0.4 t is false so that should be 0 0.9 now m is true so we have o equals true t equals false so that's 0 0.5 and then for the last one we have n is true um, but T is false now, so that's 0 0.1. So that's this one. Now we're adding. Okay, O is false. O is false. That's 0 0.6. T is false, so that's 0 0.9 again. M is true, but both of those are false, so we're looking at 0 0.5. And N is true. Where is that? That's uh, N, T is false, so that's 0 0.1 again. Okay, so this... I'm just going to calculate all of it all at once. All of this, so 0 0.0544 added with this, it's all equal to 0 0.0994. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, I hope that helped you guys. I know that's been a long video. Um, yeah, I'm pretty wiped out myself now, so I can't even imagine how you guys feel. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so that's it. Feel free to comment. Um, I don't see comments too often. I don't look at them too often, so uh, 
I don't know, other people have been pretty good about answering questions and things, so I'll post a question if you like in the comments, but chances are I won't answer it myself. Uh, feel free to subscribe and thumb up and, you know, whatever. You guys know the drill. And uh, we'll see you again.